Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. We're back to the exosuit this week and we've got to get that extra arm axis on. Don't forget to check out the previous episodes to see me actually walking in this thing. We may have to revisit the legs in the future as the weight builds up, but for now we have a viable walking platform and we've already built three shoulder axis on a mechatronic arm. Last time a few people complained I don't have an electric screwdriver, so now I've got one thanks to one of my patrons who supports me at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can help support me as well. But it's got a secret feature. Can you hear it? Now I built the upper arm, lower arm and the elbow joint earlier in the series um, and we need to mount this on here now so it lifts outwards. We've already built the axis to do this and to rotate it this way which we did last time so check out that video. But first of all we need to make this a bit lighter. As I said last time I'm going to replace this sprocket and chain which actually weighs quite a bit because it's solid steel with some wooden pulleys. Here's some lovely 12mm ply again that I've cut out. It's in several layers so we're going to make a pulley again with a, a smaller piece in the middle sandwiched between two bigger bits and we're going to use some paracord or other cord in the future to pull that around. Obviously plywood's quite strong. Pound for a pound it's stronger than steel so uh, it's going to be more than strong enough for what we need to do. Obviously if I make everything out of steel and aluminium it'll end up being really really heavy. So this way we can keep the weight down and still keep a moderate strength. So now we're going to replace this whole thing with this one piece and we've got uh, plenty of places to screw on here and so on when we come to put a gripper or something on. So now the steel's gone, this is actually really lightweight and uh, even with that arm on there, that's significantly lighter than this, which I think weighs about two kilograms or more on its own. Right, that seems pretty good, so now we just need to string back up the blocks and tackles. Right, it's all strung up, I've just used a bit of paracord instead of the chain for now. It goes round here multiple times, there's a hole through there and out the other side for the inner pulley, and it's anchored off here through a hole. So it's quite tight now, as we know the paracord will stretch, but I can always tension up the blocks and tackles at the other end. Just give that a quick test, I've just linked it to one of these normal RC handsets. Now it seems to work fine. I've made a pair of these bearing blocks that are holding bearings and you can see they've got this angle on them and that means that they fit onto the uh, angle of this and I can put the studding straight through. It's mounted slightly forward of the other axis so that it mounts basically next to my arm and it can be pushed out this way. Obviously the axis to actually lift it up we did last time as we did for the axis to lean it outwards on a vertical axis. So now we just need to find a way to add the motor to pull it up on the pulley that we left from last time. So this is the pulley we need to pull it up on, so obviously we need to put another gearbox behind it here. Now we've got this shaft it's mounted on, runs all the way along, and another bearing block, so I need something here with a kind of cage in the middle I can put the gearbox on, coupled to the inside of the arm there. So I've hung that bearing on a piece of wood now, and we're going to put a plate that's going to go across the back of these, linking them together like that. So now uh, 
Once that's screwed on, the whole thing will lift out together and we can put the gearbox in the middle. And of course, this whole thing still tilts this way, so that's no problem. All right, that looks pretty good. So now we can mount our gearbox in here, which is the same as before. As before, my gears are 3D printed in Tallman alloy, which is a nylon, and those are pretty tough, and that's what I've used for all the gears before. They run off a brushless motor. The final stage is a pulley that pulls the string around the block and tackle. So the final one runs on some 8mm, on some bearings, and the rest run on 4mm stainless. All right, there's my gearbox. So this stage goes on the motor and it's a pulley and the rest of the gears with the pulley for the cord at the other end. My motor is now mounted to turn that pulley and we've got the uh, string strung up there on the block and tackle. There's no proper control system yet, so I'm just using this RC handset to run the motors, but um, that seems to work pretty well. So let's test all three axes. I'm currently juggling two different RC handsets, uh, mainly because the cables don't reach, but we've got uh, that axis we built last time, and of course the uh, in and out axis. And then we've got the one we built this time, which lifts us like this. which seems to be that all the axis work, which is good, although the whole base is a bit wobbly, mainly due to being uh, kind of heavier on one side. The elbow, of course, is the fourth axis, so we've got four motors on the arm there, and obviously at the moment we've got one on each leg, um, and at the moment the elbow's not connected because I've run out of speed controllers, and I just really need to build a proper control system. So the eventual plan will be to have a joystick or something, a controller attached to this arm that I can pull it round by, and that pulls the motors as I do and we need to build that in the future. But first of all, can I actually still walk in this now we've got all the weight on? I think the answer is that I can't. Um, obviously leaning side to side um, and moving those legs is kind of driven by me and my own balance. The legs lift themselves. At the moment they're on little joysticks, but those again were gonna be foot pressure pads. But actually, as you can see now, this leg is collapsing as I uh, lean over this way, it's bending down by itself. And I think the other side, probably, I haven't quite got enough go to uh, actually lift this leg off the ground. I could balance it up with a heavy weight on this side as well, but then I think both legs would just collapse under the weight, so we need to look at that. The original design for the legs was that I've got these springs holding them up, so that's supporting the whole weight of everything, and these are actually press exercises. And then I've got the gearbox and pulley system that is actually lifting the leg. So when I take my feet off the ground, it compresses the spring and lets me take a step, and that worked quite well when there wasn't too much weight on top. Obviously what I've realised is of course that the uh, spring needs to be strong enough to hold the weight plus whatever I'm carrying um, so the motor needs to oppose the spring but the spring is strong enough to hold everything up so actually even if I made the spring stronger the motor would still have to be stronger still and the motor strength effectively um, opposing the spring is the same as what's required to hold everything up. So I might as well not have the spring and just have a motor strong enough to actually lift the whole thing up. In order to fit that in, I'm actually gonna restyle the legs. So uh, basically we're going to build, build them so they're much more upright and the knee faces the right way. So this is now forwards as opposed to having those legs bending the wrong way. So um, obviously we've got two parallelograms and what we're gonna do is restrict the bottom parallelogram so it can only move uh, to the upright position or face backward. Um, basically that's about it. The top however will be to lean in both directions um, and that's going to have the motor in it so the bottom's effectively going to be passive. Um, we'll see how that goes. Obviously it can only bend backwards as I sort of push forward in the suit. Additionally we could have a thing like a kneecap switcher that goes like that which uh, basically means that as the front pushes forward, the back can only go backwards, but it stops them both going forwards. Um, there's probably gonna be a lock on this anyway to stop it moving forward, but we'll see how that goes. Um, and then the motor essentially and some springs will exist in the top half that offset that parallelogram. Um, and that's gonna make it much more upright, so it should support its weight when the legs are both upright rather than being pushing on that spring all the time and uh, that should give us a much more stable leg. Then hopefully we can balance up both sides and I'll be able to walk again. Right, I need to take the legs off, so I've uh, put this thing up with some wood and I've tied the suit up here with some paracord. I'm gonna unscrew the legs and hopefully it doesn't all fall down, otherwise this is far too heavy to lift and I'll never get it on even if I can get it off.
Well, that was a pretty good idea. Uh, obviously, this is just hanging here now, which is great. And obviously, this whole assembly is one piece. If it really comes to it, we can put it on a wheeled base, but we'll try and sort out the legs for now. Stripping the legs down, taking all the electronics off. Of course, we've got to make the uh, uprights here shorter so it can stand more upright. That'll also give me more space between these pieces, of course, for the gearbox. My legs are stripped back, so there's one of them. Obviously, uh, full height, it's really tall because it was compressed down. So I now need to shorten the uprights so that we can uh, get that to be the right height when it's straight and we can work from there. So there's one of my legs, they're the right height now for me, standing at normal height. They might have a bit of a knee on them, but there we go. The idea is they're locked solid when they're upright, so the bottom needs to move from this position to this position and nothing else. And the top will move to both positions with some constraints in there. And the top is the only piece going to be driven by the motor. So as I push forward, the bottom of the leg naturally comes, and when I pick it up, it comes straight again. Uh, so hopefully that should do. And I have built legs like this before um, in the... Uh, form of my Android 7 project. And in fact, they had constraints, had one motor in the top. They had the switcher kneecap, uh, which uh, pushed the bottom back when the top goes forwards. And that robot, of course, walked by itself. Right, so I've added a hacky bit of plywood that, of course, stops this moving here and stops this moving here, so it can't go any further. It is screwed onto a baton at the back, but we're in the realms of experimentation here, so I'm not too worried about the presentation. If it works well, we'll do something proper with it and paint it silver like the rest. So I've now stuck a bungee across, so it obviously uh, springs back to that position, and when it is, you'll notice it's not completely upright, so I can put loads of force on the top and um, basically it still supports itself because the knee is locked. Well, I've in fact put the motor on the back of the leg, so this is the way the knee bends, and that block and tackle pull the leg, of course, the other way, so it will actually be lifting the uh, force like so as the leg straightens. So looking at the whole leg, of course, uh, this is bending the leg like so, and this is straightening the leg, and obviously when the leg is off the ground, it will straighten at the bottom, and then it should lock upright, now there will be a spring return that uh, brings this leg the other way, so if I bring it like this to step forward, or at least to push backwards while I'm stepping forward with the other leg, when this uh, motor lets go it should spring to the centre point, and that should spring up, and hopefully they'll both lock in um, a pretty vertical position there to hold the load. So all I've done there is added one bit of black bungee, so this has got something to tension against, and um, obviously when the motor pulls it can still pull that way, and I can break the knee and it can push that way. But when it's upright it's pretty much locked and takes the load, and obviously there's no actual locks on the joints, it's just the way it's built. So we could have some actual locks that do lock the joints if we find it's an issue where I move mass around perhaps and it moves the joints, but we'll see how that goes, that's not a priority at the moment. For now we just need to be able to support the weight of that offset arm. So I'm really happy, it looks like the legs can take that force on top of them, so it doesn't matter how much is there, but the vertical compression means the legs don't crush when the knees are locked. But can I walk in them? Well, I'm going to leave you with a cliffhanger there, I'm afraid, and you'll have to check that next time to find out, mainly because I need to go shopping for some better springs or something better to replace those bungee cords to make sure the legs do stay locked and they don't move slightly off centre when we put the mass on, and then obviously the knees would start collapsing. As I mentioned, we may need the motor to pull the parallelogram at the top in both directions. We may still need that knee switcher. We can get a pretty good idea before we put this monstrosity back on top. Also need some means of controlling them properly, which we're going to build next time. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. And you should also check out my Patreon campaign, which is how the majority of these projects are funded. Have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. Alright, that's all for now.